Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the color of these using these swatches. So I'm just going to make that say red. This guy, um, I'm going to make blue. Um, just so I can distinguish as to what is what. Um, right, it is time to get into it. It's time to start creating our perspective view. So what we're going to do is we're going to, as I've said many, many times, everything comes inside of a box. So what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing the box that this thing comes in, and then we'll start adding in lots of little bits of detail. And I suggest you, you start the same. Getting that box form in there really helps clarify where and what we're doing. Okay, so we're always going to be starting from the stationary point. This is, remember, where we're standing looking at the object. So what we're going to do is we're going to come away from the stationary point, um, and I'm just going to make, for clarity's sake, I'm going to make the um, lines that I'm drawing up to the picture plane um, one color, and we'll make those that red color. Bam. They pass through the corner and hit the picture plane. I might have to take that up. It's easy to be to misstep, um, but it's also easy, luckily, to tidy up an illustrator. Okay, so that guy's going up. I'm also going to get this corner bit. Um, to insect with that line there. Um, I'm also going to get the front corner and that's alright, it's just slightly off vertical um, and I'm just going to hit the arrow key, deselect my lines and I'm going to change my color. So the lines coming down are going to be orange just to kind of, so it's clear what's what. I'm just using color to kind of try and clear things up. So from where that picture plane, um, from where the line coming away from the standing point passes through the corner of my object, hits the picture plane and then comes down. And this line represents that corner point. This is why the object gets bigger. Yeah. Yeah, it's growing that much and it will grow that much on this side as well. This is why we get a bigger object down here with our plan view below the picture plane line. Okay, so uh, we've got one more to do. Sorry, right, there we go. There we go. Now those are the three vertical parts of my box, the outside bit. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change, I'm going to hit arrow first, deselect, and then I'm going to change my color again. I'm going to make these um, ones a kind of light, should we say maybe light green. So lines coming away from the viewpoint, and they're coming through this point here. Yeah, so again, this is the, um, the kind of horizontal lines for my box. There we go. The base as well. You can zoom in to make sure you're getting a good, um, a good representation. Okay. So there we go. Um, now, what we've got. What I'm going to do as well is just to help tidy things up. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this new layer. Temporary, or I'm just going to temp reference lines. Temp reference lines. And I'm going to move these guys, which aren't very helpful anymore. I'm going to move them onto that just by using the method we've discussed before. Just select the objects, make the um, layer you want to move onto the current layer, select a range, or send current layer. So what I can do now, temp reference lines, I'm just going to hide that. So those were useful in order to get me <clears throat> these lines, but they're no longer useful. They're just really cluttering up, uh, cluttering up the atmosphere, shall we say. Okay, 
Now where the green and orange lines intersect, that is the kind of um, corner point of my cube. So like we do when we're doing our two point perspectives, um, and this should be a green line, not a green line, there we go, not an orange line. Heading back to viewpoint one, zoom in a little bit, just scroll across a little bit there. You can also hold down the space bar and it'll get you that little hand. Um, bam, there we go. Okay, and we're starting to see that we've got the front two faces of our cube. Okay, so what we're going to do now is with the line tool as usual and just name this green again. So I'm going to draw in the back faces and I do so just like when we're drawing a two point perspective, I draw that back to the um, to the viewpoint. Now with this one, it's tempting to go for this point here, thinking that that's the back right corner of the cube. But you need to remember it's these orange lines that define the cube. Yep, we drew those orange for a reason. It's come off that back corner, gone up to here, and come down to here. It's this corner that we're interested in. Okay, so there is my cube. Going to tidy this little guy up using the A, uh, sorry, using this arrow tool here. A is the shortcut, if I haven't mentioned that already. And there is the start of my cube. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to add in a bit of detail. I'll just tidy this up because I'm a little bit of a nerd like that. Zoom in. There we go. Okay, so we're going to add in a bit of detail. It's this side that gets the detail, the elevation side. So we're coming away from our viewpoint, passing through that point there, and intersecting with the orange line. Same thing happening here. Now I'm going to do the same thing for one of the lines on the other side. Now the reason I do it for this one here is because that first step is going to come hard up to that face. The next step steps back and comes up here. So I want the next line actually coming back from around there. Um, but before we can figure out where that point is, we need to get some more of these orange lines coming down. Uh, and that's going to be our next step. Okay, you should hopefully remember that when we're talking about these orange lines, we're talking about the vertical aspects of our cube. They come from the plan detail. And how we get that detail is we come up from the standing point through the points on our plan view, they hit the picture plane and they come down. Yep. If the plan view was above the picture plane, we would go up through the picture plane, hit the points up here, and, uh, and actually come down again. And that's why you would end up with a slight shrinking as opposed to the expanding um, scenario that we've got with our plan view below the picture plane. Okay, so line tool, I'm gonna to change the color because I'm interested in keeping this um, drawing easy to read. We've done that one, I'm gonna do this one next. So bam. This one, bam. Always coming away from that standing point. Bang. And this guy next. Okay, um, just going to select arrow, deselect that, select line again, and change my color because I'm now coming down. So downward. Bang. Okay, easy peasy. Now I want to tidy up um, this a little bit. Those four lines, um, if I go to my layers, if I turn on my temp, temp lines, you see I've now got a pretty good spread of those red lines. I've gone through all the points I need to, um, but I'm gonna move those four 
onto that temporary reference line, uh, line layer as well. Okay, so I've moved those to the temporary reference lines layer just as we did so before. Um, so, more reference lines. What we're going to put in now, we've got um, these crossing lines here. Very useful. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert um, some more of those green lines going back to the vanishing point. So, that one comes back there because that's the, this is my first step. It then comes back, then up, then back. So there's going to be a line here as well. Uh, I take that back. There's not going to be a line there. I take that back. Come on, computer, take it back. There we go. Um, there is going to be a line up here where that intersection point is. So come back there. And then, so we've gone up, we step back, we come up, we step back, intersection point, back to that point. So we're going to go up and step back, so there's going to be a point there, going back to that line as well. Okay, and it's getting very confusing, but we are on the way. Um, so, we are getting very close to being able to join these up and actually seeing the object. If I draw, I'm just going to show you what I mean. I'm just going to draw in a line. If I draw that up to here, that's the intersection point. Now, up to here I should say. There we go, intersection point. And my step then comes back to this point here, intersection point. And then up to that point there, intersection point, back to that point there, intersection, up to there, back to that point there where those two lines cross. And we're starting to see our steps. It's incredible. Up to that point there. Back to that point there. Up to that point there. And I think it's a little bit dodgy in there. I might want to tidy that up. Um, so I think this guy could have. I'm just using the white arrow again. Just tidying that up. It's going to affect this. So you need to be careful. This is why it pays to be accurate. First time. Okay, and there we're starting to see our steps. So what we can do is we can just continue to rough those in. I'm going to move these also, these black lines onto a separate layer, their own layer, so I can switch those on and off. Alrighty, so as you can see, we achieved our goal of drawing a perspective of our steps. Um, I've shifted those onto their appropriate layers and what that allows me to do for instance is turn off those reference lines and then I can get a nice clear view of what's going on. Um, I can also at that stage select these lines and uh, increase their line weight for example. I'm just going to turn off the uh, labels as well. Sorry, my computer's running a bit slowly. There we go. So, select those um, objects there. And I should be able to increase their line weight to give them a bit of extra punch. Um, and then as I turn my reference lines back on, I can turn my drawings off. Um, I could turn, so I've got my reference lines. Um, I can then do similar things to them. So I can select those reference lines and change their line weight to say 0.5. Um, so really reduce those down. Uh, and then 
when I bring back in my drawings, you can see I've got something that really pops out of the page uh, and those reference lines are in there. You can see how I've come about to draw uh, the projection. You know that I've done it correctly, but they don't dominate the page. And that's the real advantage of using a um, computer package. I can obviously also select those lines and change their color back to a light gray, um, maybe 50% gray or something like that. Okay, so that is us um, at the end of our journey. Um, all that really remains to be done is for us to insert a um, drawing title or title block. Um, and you can do that with um, just a rectangle and series of text boxes. All very straightforward for men and women of your skill. Um, so what we have covered, I'll just uh, reiterate some of the points that we've covered. Um, we made a choice to put our plan view below the picture plane. Now the reason we did that, if I turn my labels back on, the reason we did that is that that enabled us to get a larger view of that object in here. Um, if I bring it up um, above, it's going to get slightly smaller. If I bring it um, so it's half and half, it's going to remain the same size. So depending on what you want, um, it will dictate where the position of this is. We also um, played around with our horizontal, uh, sorry, our horizon plane. Um, remember, if we bring that lower, we're not going to see as much of the top of our objects. That's our eye line. So if that horizon plane goes through the object, we're not going to be able to see the top of the objects. We're just going to be able to see the kind of front and sides of it. Um, and it, even if we brought it all the way out the bottom, we would see the bottom of the object. Um, and one kind of final point, the stationary point, picking that stationary point. Remember, we chose that to make our viewpoints, uh, sorry, our vanishing points, nice and wide. Yep, we wanted those as wide as we could because we wanted to avoid that distortion that we saw. Okay, um, so those are the main points to kind of consider when you're choosing your view. Yep, you want to make a valid choice that shows the most detail of your design, um, and then you want to get stuck into get stuck in there and draw that detail in. Make sure you're accurate um, and use those colors to help help you along the way distinguish what uh, line is what and it'll really help you out as well as our layer tools as well.